A very good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Pati sir, Kamal sir. So we are starting with the today's webinar. I am Rohit Shahi, uh, Senior Executive at Sector Skill Council for Food Processing, and extending your warm welcome to the another webinar in the series of the Ajadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav on pest control management system in the food industry. And uh, I would also like to express my sincere appreciation to the all the audience who are joining us today with the huge numbers and our speakers uh, for agreeing to be the part of this webinar and uh, entire Fixie team who have helped to make this event. And now I would like to uh, I would request Pritha ma'am to give us the brief introduction about the Fixie and also to set up the context. So over to you ma'am. Um, um, uh, good evening everyone. Sorry for that little glitch in the echo. Um, I'm Preeta Tripathi. I'm the Deputy General Manager in Fixi, and I welcome each and every one of you, including our esteemed speakers on this uh, webinar, which is the ninth webinar in the series of Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav on pest control management in the food safety systems. So uh, before we uh, proceed you know, with the session, there are a couple of things that I would like to uh, bring to your kind attention. Firstly, we'll start with a little introduction about FIXI, who we are, what we do, what are the programs that we run, and what are the upcoming things you know, that we have in our portfolio. Post that, we'll be moving on with the uh, webinar from our uh, speakers. And at this particular point, we have disabled the chat uh, here. Okay, we'll be opening the chat after the session is completed. Uh, when both of our speakers have, you know, given presentation on their content, we'll be opening the deck to take questions for around five to ten minutes. So all of you, all the participants, you know, who have joined, if you have any questions, kindly note it down, make a note of it, and you can raise your questions towards the end of the session when we open the deck. All right. So let's move to. Um, getting a little you know information about who we are what fix is just give me a second i'm just loading my presentation i hope my screen is visible to everyone let me just start the slideshow okay so food processing sector skill council um, that is Food Industry Capacity and Skill Initiative, widely known as a Food Processing Sector Skill Council. Uh, we are a not-for-profit organization working to create skilled manpower for the food processing industry. We are promoted by the Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industry, that is FICI, with the support by National Skill Development Corporation, that's NSDC, and the Ministry of Food Processing Industries, MOFPI are governed by a governing council that comprises of members right from uh, the CEO FSSAI to representatives uh, from CFTRI, uh, MOFPI and FICI. Um, currently, Mr. Ashwini Arora, who is the chairman and managing director at LT Foods, is serving as the uh, president of FICI's governing council. And Mr. Ashwini Malhotra, who is the managing director of Wickfield Foods, is the current vice president of our governing council. Um, we have different, uh, we have many collaborations, you know, with many food industries, some of which, you know, you can have a look at the slide in front of you. Uh, we are the knowledge associates with FSSCI, and we are working in collaboration to develop different, uh, you know, modules with um institutes like niftem cftri iifpt ignu and lady Irwin college very recently we have um, entered into a mou with our canadian counterparts also known as the food processing skills canada and we have come up with a very unique and interesting uh, online course i'll be giving you a very short information about the same in the next couple of slides as well so um, at FIXI, what are our major functions? What do we do? So we are an industry-led body and are mandated to create skilled manpower for the food processing sectors. Some of the services you know, that we provide 
our development of standards, content and curriculum. And till date we have developed around nine NSQF uh, aligned qualification packs. We are responsible for a conduction of assessment and certification of the trained candidates. Uh, we are also participating in the setting up of affiliation and accreditation of the training centers. As of now, we have uh, more than 110 training centers placed across the country. We also plan and facilitate the execution of training of trainers and training of assessor programs. Also, we are working uh, very closely with the policy makers to strategize different initiatives in the skilling sector in the food industry. Some of the services that we offer apart from uh, the skilling initiatives of government are trainings in food safety and hygiene. We are um, in panel training partner and we have an MOU with FSSAI for pro providing trainings on FOSTEC and incorporating the FOSTEC trainings across all the skill programs that we undertake in the country. We also have a dedicated job portal and when I say a dedicated job portal, this job portal is specifically for uh, candidates and professionals from the food industry, you know, graduates who are in their final year in the food technology field and allied fields and also, um, you know, students um, studying in the BWOC colleges and technical institutes. So this particular portal is for them. We have a data of around um, more than 16,000 resumes on this portal and we have many industries who keep on posting their vacancies on this portal. This is a free of cost portal and I would urge all of you all to act, you know, at least have a look and make use of this portal. We also have a very interesting learning management system, which is the e-learning platform that Fixie has developed. And uh, we have approximately 40 courses that are available for you to use. All right. And uh, one of the things that we again offer is uh, the apprenticeship programs uh, that is under the head of National Apprenticeship uh, Promotion Scheme. Benefits and facilitates, you know, uh, the students and uh, gives them the opportunity to apply for an uh, internship with the food industries across the country. So this is something again very interesting and exciting that uh, students can look up at. Um, so as I told in the previous slides, uh, with Food Processing Skills Canada, we have launched the Food Safety Readiness Program. So this particular program, it is um, it has 10 different modules, OK, and uh, it is a self paced learning program. So uh, the actual value of this program is approximately 3500 Canadian dollars. That is approximately 2 lakh Indian rupees. And since we are introducing this program jointly with them, we were we are able to offer this program at a cost of 12,000. So this particular program, you once you avail this course, uh, it is a self-paced learning program. It means you can take the courses, the modules as per your own convenience and you can finish the courses. After completion of each module, you'll be getting one individual certificate. And once you complete all 10 courses, you'll be getting one consolidated program completion certificate. And all these certificates, they are jointly given by FIXI and FPSC Canada. So uh, this is something which is really very uh, exciting and interesting and we'll be sharing more details towards the end of the session. I again urge you all to keep on looking, um, you know, in the chat window uh, from time to time here and we'll be sharing these details with you. So that's about, you know, with Fixie and our introduction. I now uh, will ask Rohit to sort of introduce our speakers. Uh, so just just a second, I think I still have to talk something about today's session. So uh, pest control management, it's again a very um, important aspect that the food industry cannot ignore. You know, we all know that pests are inadvertently drawn to food. So it becomes very important to have a proper and effective pest management system in place in any food industry irrespective of the scope of operations. So I think, um, you know, we are very um, elated and happy to have two eminent 
food professionals here you know taking you through the pest control systems in food industry so i hope this session is going to be really very interesting and enlightening and it will give you some insights about how pest management is done in the industry so uh, with this i'm handing it over to my colleague rohit to take things forward thanks everyone So today we have our first speaker, Dr. Pashupati Vinkat, and he is the honorary advisor for the food safety to the FH, FS, FHRAI, SIHRA, HRAI, HEAI, TNBF, etc. And he is the certified lead auditor in the food safety management systems, and also a certified lead quality manager from uh, being the Abingbag, and he is the member of the FSCI committee, and he has conducted uh, he has conducted training classes all over India on the food safety, and uh, he is the national resource uh, nominated by FSCI for training master trainer in catering industry, and he is also a diamond trainer in the food tech. So we have a great uh, speaker with us today. So I welcome you, sir, in the webinar. and thank you for sparing the time from your busy schedule and agreeing to be the speaker and uh, please enlighten all the audience with your wise knowledge so here i welcome to you over to you sir <coughs> thank you uh, sir uh, good evening uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, it's my pleasure to be with you today i'm so happy to be uh, in this session let us straight away get into the topic now let us uh, see what we are primarily handling when we say that we are handling pest management in the food industry the manufacturing uh, is my share is my screen sharing uh, visible to all of you is my screen sharing visible not yet sir not yet okay Uh, now now is it visible uh, yes yes it is yes sir we can see okay now let us get into what we are talking about we are talking about an industry industries in india the, the country is so large and when we are talking about food industry there are about 39478 registered manufacturers it's a, you know the problem is with them but that is relatively less but what we have to handle is a huge number of the food retailers the food service industry and the innumerable number of petty food manufacturers now when you ask them the first question are their buildings owned by the food business operators the answer is no so obviously they are not in any way designed to control pests on the other hand they are extremely pest friend pest friendly and the problem is 90% of rented premises are in such a way that little or no consideration is given to pest management the third aspect of the problem is that apart from the manufacturing industry in this country the rest of the food industry that is the food retail the food packing the food storage and distribution and the food service industry which is so huge in this country has very little demarcation point between the operator and the consumer you know particularly when it comes to the food service industry where the operator is just standing in the counter and the food business operator is providing the food so because of the absence of the demarcation line pest control management becomes even more difficult now if i have to describe it in real terms just read this great numbers we have about 12.8 million groceries retail food groceries about 53000 hotels 70 lakh restaurants 
as i told you earlier 39478 registered manufacturers so, so sorry to point Yes. Sir, I'm really sorry to interrupt. So, if you can just please start the slide show because uh, the slides are not uh, visible uh, in a bigger format. So, if okay. you can just please start the slide show. Yeah, much better. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So, yes. the two point three crore unorganized eateries and countless petty food vendors and hawkers in this country. So if you see these numbers, you will understand what we are trying to talk about. The, the best management, therefore, becomes a topic of great importance, a real challenge. And in fact, there is, there is so much to do in terms of understanding best management as a holistic concept. And it is not about the sum total of chemicals and the devices that we were talking about earlier are talking till this point right now, but we'll have to think about how do we draft different guidelines for best control management friendly food business operation buildings? And what are the interim methods that can be there in the infrastructure? Not just the small measures, the, the preventive air strips or air curtains, but something more than that. And how do we draft a guideline for this? Because there is no clear cut guideline for the food service industry, the food retail industry, the food storage and distribution industry, while there is somewhat of a guideline for the manufacturing industry and the big food corporation go downs in the country. But the, the major part that we where we face a challenge, that's about the 12.8 million groceries and the 2.3 crore unorganized tea trees and the 70 lakh restaurants, we have a great challenge in the hand. And so, uh, you know, let us get to, uh, uh, let us get to what we're trying to uh, discuss here. I'm sorry. Yes. So when we when we discuss pest management, whenever we discuss about pest control management, what as as a food safety advisor, as somebody who is a national advisor for the hotel industry, I do hear people telling me, sir, we have signed up a contract. And what have you signed up in the contract? Because the country is bio, you know, the country's biodiversity is huge. The geographical variation is unimaginable. The size of the country is different. The seasonal variations are so complex. And you have different vegetables, different fruits, different food subsets is coming into the market. And the way that these things are handled are so unique to different regions of India. Given all that complexity, I think today what we have to understand is it is no more about one size fits all. It is no more about just understanding that these are the set of chemicals that will handle these sets of pests. Because post harvest loss is estimated at 75,000 to 90,000 crores a year in this country. That is just a tip of the iceberg. And that is a known number. We have a huge unknown number on the post raw material induction into the food, food industry and the pest, con, you know, pest related loss in terms of quantity, in terms of quality, in terms of safety, which is immeasurable. So we have three important things to you know address here, like how we address in eat right eating safely, eating sustainably and eating healthy. In pest control management also, we have to think, are we controlling effectively? Are our controls sustainable? Are we following such practices that can ensure a better qualitative output of food in this country? And that is where I think we will have to think more about the alternative solutions 
that are there. OK, and what are these alternative solutions? And when we have to think about alternative solutions, what do we have to do first? The the first step is choose a licensed operator because I come across so many people who do not know how to differentiate between a licensed operator in pest control management versus somebody who's who's just fly by night. And the next step is never start an inch without a proper snag report. Because unless you have a very clear snag report given by a qualified pest control contractor, I think you are trying to venture into an area without diagnosing the disease. It is like bowling a no ball and asking for a wicket in cricket. You are never going to get a positive response. So you will have to understand. You will have the, the second step. Very important step is the first step towards actual engagement is about asking for a detailed snag report from the pest control expert. And based on that report, do a closure of sna snags and then redefine the contract. Be fluid enough to think that the contract can be changed based on the snag report. Because if you are so rigid at this point that yes, I have signed a contract, so I will not modify it, then I think you are reaching a blind end. The most important step is that once you get a snag report and when you do the closure, you will come to know how the contract can be more effective with result oriented, verifiable and measurable results in pest control management. <clears throat> the next step is, of course, focus on the pest control devices plan. And get a buy in of all process users. I do find that these two things are never done. You just get one by pest control devices plan and think that it is something like an invoice or a goods received note and you just sign it and keep it in the file. You never discuss it in detail with all the user departments and you don't get a buy in of them because the people who are users, that is the, the operations manager or the store manager or the you know manager packing or manager you know service you know the the housekeeping head all of them have to get a perfect you will have to get a buy-in of all of them on the pest control devices plan then only they will understand the importance of monitoring all these things very clearly then collectively discuss seasonal challenges and arrive at chemicals and dilutions what we do more often than not is directly go to the fifth step. The fifth step may be known to people. Fifth step may be somewhat critical, but fifth step is absolutely useless if the first four steps are not followed. So because we have to understand the whole food industry operates on five important hygiene stations the receiving of raw materials, the storage of raw materials, the pre-preparation of the, uh, the, the pre-preparation step, then the production step. Of course, the fifth step can be packing or service, as the case may be. But in all these five different stations, the nature of operations are different. The, uh, the, the texture of materials that you're going to handle are different. And the people, their knowledge level, their work hours, their operation levels, everything is different. So unless you are able to understand the difference between uh, the, the, you know, uh, the effect of pest on food or the amount of, you know, pest incidents during day and night, you will never be able to arrive at a proper, uh, a proper solution of, of arriving at solutions. So we will have to uh, we will have to very clearly now think rethink the the pattern because I see so many complaints now right now with the FSSCI becoming enforce the enforcement becoming more and more serious. What do I find us? Uh, let us take the simple penal penalty classes of FSSCI for the unsafe food is defined as the incidence of pest in a food. An accidental cockroach 
a body part of a cockroach or body part of an insect seen in food is punishable with six months imprisonment and two lakh rupees fine. And when such is the seriousness of pest incidents in food, you just you know think for a minute on how do we think about pest management? Do we give that importance? Do we actually understand that it is a science-based system? Do we actually recognize that the pest control contractor is an expert and is not, not just a service provider like your you know, a net connection provider or a, your telephone you know, access provider? Is, is, is a very qualified science expert. And we have to give that weightage. And not only that, one of the most in important things, some of the most important things that we often miss in this whole journey are, you know, there are there are six gateways that can make the pest incidents more. Having bought bad raw materials because due to you know supply and demand, due to our pressure on economics what we do is we compete in the different markets of India and do not exactly bother about the moisture percentage, do not exactly bother about the quality. We try to get access to maximum raw material, particularly if they are, there are, you know, the products are seasonal products. So when you don't get the products with the right moisture or the right quality, your bad raw material can be a great source of pest in infestation and you will be buying in a problem and then trying to later control it, which will become too dangerous. And number two is infrastructure. The, the, as I told you, we, we don't necessarily, you know, understand what are we going to do in this place. The real estate uh, economics takes the lead. So we go by that economics and try to adjust the all other things. But very rarely small organizations, particularly MSME, you know, food service providers and food retails are not able to take a decision on the infrastructure because the infrastructure is a very important thing if, if the walls and the floors are not properly designed and if the ceiling is leaking and if the ventilation and lighting are not good, you are going to have great problems in pest management. Then improper storage practices, vulnerable packing materials. Uh, packing as a science has improved in this country and packing as a science has got a lot of options, but we don't have a temperament to choose the right thing. When I say packing, I'm not talking about the final customer packing. It is about the packing even at the storage level, even at the go down warehousing level, and then the bad handling. We think that only at the retail end or the food service end, we will have to have visible hygiene. We don't think about what are our handling practices at the go down level, at the storage level, and uh, at the at the you know pre preparation of uh, you know food products level, and of course lack of hygiene and cleaning. These six gateways make your pest management that much more difficult. Now, as I told you earlier, there are two great misconceptions that we live with. One is pest control is not mere application of chemicals, which is our typical notion. Pest control is a highly science-based management system. We have to understand that pest control is a highly science-based management system. The science can be native science. The science can be the, the science that you read as entomology or the science can be the solution can be anything in organic chemicals, organic chemicals. It can be plant based, you know, repellents, uh, anything. But it is a science based management system. And the other thing that makes the whole pest management, uh, you know, in our industry even more difficult is that we are very adamant as an industry that we will not close our snag reports. And but we think that the chemicals and devices can control all pests, which means that we are moving in two opposite directions. We reach nowhere. Our destination is at the is remains the starting point. We will have to understand 
that the snag reports have to be closed then only you know your chemicals and devices can ever work i i always advocate the pq formula according to me p1 is pre control application steps we will have to be very very clear that if the pest control contractor has promised that this is what he is going to do he we must request him sir what are the conditions that are going to make your pest control application much more effective and if he says a b c then we will have to ensure that the pre control application steps are fulfilled and then number 2 we will have to have a right kind of supervision and a right kind of monitoring system on precise and correct pest control application which is p2 and p3 is post application control follow ups now this is also extremely important unless you have a very right methodology on handing over a particular area for pest control application and taking over sops are well defined if both these things are not well defined then you will encounter more problems after every pest control then actually have seeing a reduction in the incidence of pest and rodents so the p cube is a very important step for the food industry like our d4 with which we are we are uh, very well versed with on deny entry deny shelter deny food and deny destroy the p cube is the is the modern idea of controlling or helping the pest control management system work pre control application steps the precise and correct pest control application and post application control follow ups i would like to advocate as a person who has spent more than uh, 23 24 years in the food industry uh, you know the sensitivity of our premises in the different areas we have to know how to zone them the red zone the orange zone and the green zone for example if it is a hospitality industry hotel industry then the red zone are your you know uh, material receiving area material storage area the kitchens uh, the rest uh, the guest areas become red zone your orange zones are your administrative areas you know uh, the the accounts department or your Uh, the other places where administrative work is done and the green zone may be your parking area or your garden so we have to understand how to demark these areas so that you tell about the sensitivity of these areas and you know apprise the pest control person on what do you expect in this because it is very important for us to understand at this point of time with the entire world thinking about climate change that we don't overdo any kind of chemical application we don't overdo anything pest are definitely a threat food to food industry but then it is not that that we have zero pest uh, you know that that is not our aim and that is not what we should think of so the sensitivity of these different areas are so important and i believe to achieve many of these results i find four things missing and i am emphasizing these four things as the the modern era of pest control management in this country please develop in every organization the pest history book of your premises because pest follow a particular behavior it you know it is like animal behavior studies you can very easily you know by recording the history of pest incidents and what you did and how you are able to control or not able to control you will be able to definitely come out with great inferences if you have a pest history book of your premises it can be very 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 you know raw uh, and you know but you will you will definitely able to uh, you know arrive at better conclusions by doing it the number 2 is register your observations on the effectiveness of each method of control during different seasons in different areas and this is extremely important and that is why i said that we must have the buy in of users because unless you register your you know observations and the effectiveness of the pest control in different seasons in different areas you will never be able to 
you know, uh, understand what works where and never miss, miss a chance to observe if a neighboring or a nearby compound with same business has remarkable difference in pest incidence. And finally, nudge user departments to give their original and true observations. If you do these things, then you uh, you know control pest in a much better manner. And and uh, the 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 industry uh, has got great experts. The the my my speak my next speaker who's going to be in the webinar uh, is an expert on uh, the the chemistry of uh, pest control chemicals and. Uh, there's a huge vast amount of knowledge available in the country on handling pest control chemicals and what chemicals are effective against what pest. And also we have native wisdom available. For example, in many of the premises in which I'm involved, I'm suggesting certain plants which are more attractive to the pest than the food. So by this method, we are able to control pest. And I have found in my experience two enemies, uh, two biggest friends of pest, carton boxes and newspaper. And by making many of my clients and many people whom I know and largely the hotel industry and the catering industry to avoid carton boxes and newspapers in the food preparation and process and storage area, we have been able to control pest by a, by a big percent. So I think uh, we must apply a lot of common sense. We must understand that it is a very science based system. We must take the preliminary steps very clearly and most importantly respect the pest control expert as an expert and allow this science based system to flourish. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, sir. You, so much Thank, you. Sir. Thank you very much. Uh, just before we move on to the next speaker, just a little something about Dr. Pashupati. Uh, Pashupati sir is one of the first national level resource person, you know, that was empaneled in FSSAI and he still holds the record of doing the maximum number of food safety trainings for FSSAI and otherwise, you know, and um, I'm you know, I'm really honored and I'm really happy that sir agreed to be a part and take part in this webinar and uh, share his thoughts uh, about his experiences that he's uh, had over decades of, you know, uh, working tirelessly in the industry. So, I mean, if you go out in the food industry, it's very rare that you would not have heard about the work that he has done. And honestly, sir, I'm really very elated that you agreed to come on board and be a part uh, and take part as a speaker on this webinar. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much. So oh, moving on to the next speaker. <laughs> moving on to the next speaker. Uh, Rohit, if you can please, uh, you know, share the intro slide for Dr. Shukla. I'll read that out. So um, it's again my pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Ramanan Shukla. He's a very uh, old colleague and you know someone who is been in the industry for a long time. Uh, Dr. Shukla is currently working as the Director of Quality Council of India and he has a doctorate in Environment Management and an MBA in Marketing. He has been a member in the expert group on food safety and quality at CII phase and has been a jury for various awards that CII conducts. He's a certified lead auditor for ISO 9001 QMS, ISO 22000, FSMS and a certified Six Sigma Black Belt. He is also an assessor for ISO and IC 17021 and he's been a trainer for ISO 9001 QMS lead auditor courses and is a FSSAI master trainer for the statutory training of food safety officers. So uh, even Dr. Shukla has been involved in uh, delivering more than 3000 trainings uh, you know training professionals in quality and business excellence and I'm again very honored to have him on board. It was really tough, you know, getting timelines and taking time from his busy schedule to devote time for this webinar. I'm really very grateful to you, Dr. Shukla, that, you know, you agreed to be a part of this webinar. And on behalf of the Fixie team, you know, I welcome you on this webinar. And uh, with, 
and i hand it over to you to take your session thank you so much yeah thank you prita thank you so much uh, and uh, yes it's it's been a uh, wonderful uh, being here and especially uh, hearing uh, dr pasupati also so that that has been really uh, wonderful because he has also set up a, a very beautiful uh, you know context for for this entire program so just give me a moment while i uh, share uh, my slides yeah i hope uh, the screen is visible just visible you can uh, start okay. the slide show i think yeah it is it is already put on yeah uh, so great uh, once again i welcome all the participants here and uh, it's it's really a great pleasure to be talking uh, on on this subject of pest management in uh, food industry and uh, as as we all know uh, without food uh, no one can survive in fact uh, this entire universe will go for a toss and uh, while we have been evolving as as humans uh, even uh, various insects uh, various organisms have also been evolving so if we look at Uh, the food cycle or the food chain uh, from the time uh, we sow the seeds in the farms and uh, by the time it comes on the plate uh, we see that the pests are always there in one or the other form whether they are microbes or whether they are insects or or whether they are birds or or rodents so uh, we we know for sure that pests would always be there wherever we are and and that is where uh, food industry becomes uh, very important Uh, here in terms of pest management uh, and also as dr pasupati also uh, mentioned that uh, there are huge losses in in terms of you know uh, the crop production uh, when we look at global scenario we uh, see that the losses are to the tune of around 220 uh, billion us dollars every year it means that around 20 to 40% of the crops uh, that are grown they are lost uh, due to the pests so therefore pest management plays two uh, important uh, you know roles one is bringing food security uh, and another one is bringing food safety in perspective so let us move ahead and uh, see what all uh, is there about pests so now the first thing about the pests is is that they are extremely intelligent it's it's not that only humans are uh, intelligent so pests uh, we have seen that uh, even if it is a cockroach that we are talking about Uh, they have been surviving for uh, years uh, some some historians or uh, scientists say that they are as old as dinosaurs and even uh, beyond that so they have evolved they have been with us and and uh, that is where their intelligence lies similarly with respect to rodents uh, the rats or the mice that we look at people think that they are just uh, you know pests or or animals but they are extremely intelligent and and that is where we see them surviving in in very harsh conditions everyone is after them they have lot of enemies but they are surviving so they they are extremely intelligent and therefore to tackle them uh, we have to be if not more at least equally intelligent now another uh, aspect that comes into play is that the pests are very hardy uh, they they are uh, very strong when it comes to uh, survival uh you will uh, if if i have to uh, pick up few uh, you know interesting facts about these pests now uh, when we look at the rodents in in one year if you have allowed uh, let's say a pair of rodents into your facility within a year they will multiply into around 2000 rodents if they their population goes unchecked similarly when we look at uh, uh, the way they actually can get into your uh, facility they just need if uh, if we talk about a mouse it will just need around 6 to 7 mm of space to squeeze inside your facility so that that becomes very uh, interesting and important flies if we talk about uh, they they also multiply very fast within 9 to 10 days they mature enough to start laying down eggs and if again their uh, population goes unchecked within just one year a pair of flies and and the offsprings that they produce if they are all allowed to reproduce within one year they can actually uh, encircle entire earth that would be around 18 feet deep so that is the potential of uh, breeding that they have and and similarly about cockroaches they can live without food for a month and uh, without uh, water for a week so you can uh, understand how uh, robust uh, these pests are and how hardy they are and and while we have food all around uh, in our facility being in food industry 
uh, there is always a challenge to manage uh, such super uh, uh, you know creatures so why pest management now why it is important uh, for us being in food industry to manage pests now if we look at uh, uh, these pests whether it is flies whether it is stored grain pests whether it is birds uh, we we all know that they actually uh, apart from uh, causing the damage that they can uh, they are also responsible for several diseases right uh, the black death we all know it is it was a plague in 13th century which killed almost around uh, the estimates uh, say that it would be, it would be around uh, 7.5 crores to 20 crore people who died because of uh, the rodents because of the plague that actually came through them uh similarly if we look at flies or cockroaches uh they they may transmit uh salmonella they may transmit uh, streptococcus uh birds uh, birds droppings are also responsible for transmitting uh listeria and and these these all uh, you know bacteria and even uh fungi they they are all responsible for uh, severe uh, food poisoning and various illnesses like when it comes to stored grain pests even we we think that these are harmless but they can create a lot of damage to the grains that is one and another one is while they create this damage they also warm up uh, the grains uh, leading to uh, attraction of uh, fungus and many of these fungi like uh, aspergillus etc can uh, start secreting uh, mycotoxins which are cancerous and and a lot of people uh, get sick because of these Uh, similarly when it it comes to uh, other aspects of uh, food safety now you all know that if you want to implement hasap there are prps that have to be put in place and pest management is also one of the prerequisite programs that is supposed to be in place so it is it is basically because a pest can be a hazard in terms of biological hazard uh, being uh, you know uh, responsible to transmit various microbes it can also cause to physical contamination that is basically the uh, uh, parts let's say uh, the hair droppings of of the rodents it can be droppings of the birds it can be parts of the insects these all become extraneous matter in in food so that becomes a physical hazard and then next one uh, when we look at uh, the chemical hazard it is in terms of various uh, mycotoxins that are secreted by uh, fungi due to presence of these pests so at every level of pcb Uh, the pests become uh, extremely hazardous so the first requirement of pest management uh, is is basically because we have to ensure that the food that we are processing or that we are handling is safe for consumption other re- reason is the regulatory requirement dr uh, pasupati mentioned uh, like the fsi norms are getting stringent day by day and uh, there are penalties so if if there is a pest uh, there is unsafe food because of pests uh, there can be imprisonment and also there can be uh, you know fines of up to 3 lakhs or if it causes grievous injury it can go up to 10 lakhs so again regulation is is extremely important uh, recently in april uh, there was uh, a shrimp pre cooked shrimp that was uh, exported to us and uh, there was salmonella in it and us fda uh, issued a notification for recall and the investigations are on so uh, regulatory uh, requirements uh, actually uh, makes us uh, to understand that pest management is extremely important when we can't really look at it that it's it's just one of the things or uh, that we need to tackle it has to be looked at very sincerely once uh, any kind of situation comes in in terms of pests like sighting of pest in in a restaurant or uh, if if a customer uh, finds a pest uh, let's say a fly in a biscuit or uh, in a chocolate again that becomes a huge concern and it can bring a lot of losses i am sure you all uh, still remember how cadbury suffered when there was an insect that was actually uh, uh, brought to notice uh, and and they had to invest a lot to regain that public trust and also the confidence uh, amongst amongst its consumers and finally uh, any pest incidents that comes into play or comes into public uh, glare it can bring uh, loss of reputation and and therefore pest management again becomes uh, extremely important for any business so it's not only that we are dealing with pest but basically what pest managers try to do is to uh, safeguard the reputation and health of the people 
Now, uh, the necessity of pest management in food industry, as I said, it, it becomes part of the PRP. It becomes a part, integral part of your food safety program. But apart from that, there are a lot of operational uh, concerns uh, in, in a food business operation, uh, which actually uh, kind of attracts or invites pests, like any food uh, industry or food business will certainly have these uh, things coming in. Like, for example, uh, there would be a lot of food ado, uh, that is natural, right? Because we are handling food. Uh, there would be warmth because there are uh, these air handling units. You will have air conditioners, a uh, lot of lot of equipment that will generate heat and warmth, which again uh, attracts insects. There are a lot of exterior lighting that that becomes that is certainly a necessity for any industry to operate. But then it will start attracting uh, insects towards the building premises. There's a lot of movement of guests, employees. There's a lot of material coming in, going out, and this all actually creates a lot of opportunities for the pests to get in. Uh, similarly, if let's say the facility, your facility is, is pretty clean and good, it's not a guarantee that uh, the premises next to your facility uh, would be equally clean or hygienic, right? So there, there would be always an opportunity for the pests to move into your facility. And finally, there is a lot of restriction on pesticide uh, use, like Dr. Pasupati mentioned, that there are certain zones uh, in, in food industry. In fact, the food industry is extremely sensitive to use of pesticides. Uh, wrong use of pesticides or incorrect use of pesticide can actually lead the pesticide into the food product, which will be, again, much more uh, difficult thing to handle. So there are always a food industry or a food handling establishment uh, is, is always extremely attractive to pests. It's always encouraging pests to come in. And, and that becomes a very challenging part for any food industry professional to handle. And while we manage pests, now uh, if, if we use uh, pest control, uh, just chemical pest control, what happens is we may end up harming uh, the unintended people. Like uh, as, as you can see in this image, uh, you spray pesticide, it gets into food or it harms someone. Uh, here in this case, it's, it's the spider man. So that is, that is how we can actually end up doing more harm uh, than actually uh, managing the pests. So now if we move ahead, what are the ways to kill the pests? This, this age old technique that you see on your screen, you can simply you know, just put a foot on them. You can actually hire someone to just keep running after the pests. You can use some kind of robots to kill them. Uh, and, and when you're extremely irritated, sometimes you feel that if I could have a gun that could actually clean all of them, or maybe you have an option of a pest control ninja, right? So these, these are various ways, and, and I'm sure you all would have at some point or the other uh, faced this kind of frustration while managing various pests. So how do we manage pests? What, what is the right way to do it? So let me be very honest here. There is no magic button for effective pest management, right? There is no single way to do it. The best way, however, is integrated pest management. You can't just look at chemical control, right? That you have actually given a contract to a pest controller or pest control operator, and, and that the person will, or that company will take care of all your pest problems. That is not possible at all. You have to actually work in tandem to ensure that there is a proper integrated pest management program that is integrated with your food safety program. So let me give you a, a difference between a pest control and integrated pest management. Now, these are loosely used for uh, you know the same thing. But when we look at pest control, it's largely reactive and an isolated activity. Uh, when I say isolated activity, it means that you have signed up a contract and uh, you allow the pest control operator to do whatever they want. So they would perhaps resort to indiscriminate use of pesticides uh, spraying everywhere or putting, uh, you know, different kinds of pesticides or rodenticides everywhere and uh, eventually expecting the pests to go away. And uh, finally, it aims to just control the population that is proactive. Here you actually start looking at uh, the history of pests. Uh, you start looking at what kind of raw materials you have, what kind of process uh, processes you have put in place uh, that will actually, uh, you know, attract certain kinds of pests. And therefore, this is proactive. It becomes integral part of food safety programs. So as you start developing your PRPs and HACCP uh, plan, uh, 
uh, you build pest management into it. Uh, there has to be a judicious use of pesticides. Uh, it means that pesticides would be used only when they are really required. Otherwise, there would be different means that should be used to manage the pest at a particular threshold level. And finally, apart from control, instead of con complete control, IPM actually aims to prevent and monitor uh, the pest population so that the moment they are above a particular threshold, uh, certain actions are elicited. And IPM also comprises of elaborate reporting systems and invo involvement of various stakeholders. It would be your suppliers, your supply chain. It would be your, uh, you know, the uh, person who's looking at the uh, sanitization part, right? All, all those people, all employees, all workers, uh, daily wages, everyone has to be part of this integrated pest management system because uh, we, what we are talking about is a system, not just a standalone uh, pest control program. So uh, this uh, has been uh, these IPM, when we talk about, there are four Ds that we always advocate. And this has been an age old thing, but it still holds good. The first D is to deny entry to the pests. Second one is to, in case, let's say, uh, you have not been able to deny entry. Somehow they have come in, deny them food and water. What will happen is, usually they would actually come for either food or shelter. If you do not provide them food and water, they will move out, right? Or even if there's a little food, they will always come as a guest, but they would not make your facility their home. And if that is also not possible, uh, ensure that you deny shelter or the conditions where they can actually be attracted enough to stay inside your facility. And finally, if all these things, when uh, these things, even when they do work, sometimes you have to resort to destruction uh, through different means, or uh, if these do not work, you will have to actually act on uh, this destruction part. So now I'll just give you a glimpse of uh, what allows the entry and how to deny entry. Now this is usually, these are the images from uh, various facilities that you see here. See, uh, in the first image, the window is, uh, windows are open, right? So although in a food facility, because there would be a lot of other, there would be a lot of warmth that would be generated, the pests would actually get attracted. And therefore, uh, either if, if there is a need to open the window, if let's say there's uh, some ventilation required, uh, put screens on the windows, right? Similarly, here you see in the second image, there is shutter that is open, but it is, it is not uh, actually uh, proof with any kind of uh, air curtain or any, any other stuff. Uh, the third image shows that these are uh, you know, rubber strips or plastic curtain that we uh, call, although it has been put up, see how nicely it has been tied up just to avoid inconvenience. And this, this becomes a big mistake. Uh, similarly, you see in one of the images, there is an insectocutor, that is insect light trap that has been actually hung just opposite a window, right? So what happens with this kind of placement is that in the night, when these blue lights, they actually, uh, they are switched on, the insects from outside, they'll get attracted towards the window and they'll, they'll all accumulate there and any small opening, they will just enter in. So location of these insectocutors again becomes very important. Uh, while in these cablings and renovation work, again, these are, are big enemies because uh, normally once the cables are laid down, uh, the holes that are actually drilled, they are left open. And, and again, this allows entry uh, for various pests. So what do we do to prevent entry? Now, there are certain ways, uh, you know, one uh, effective means is to put up an air curtain. Uh, air curtain is basically uh, the first image on the left top. It is, it is basically that continuously uh, blows uh, air, you know, and, and this ideally, it, it should not be put inside, but it should be always on the external side, because if you put it inside, uh, the insects that you want to prevent, they will halfway, they will be uh, entering inside, right? So this is this is where it becomes extremely important. One, to make sure that the width of your air curtain actually covers the entire width of uh, the doors or, or the entrances. And also the speed of the air flow, it, it must be at least 1400 uh, feet per minute, because that is where it, it becomes very effective to manage the uh, inflow of the pests. Uh, windows, certainly you have to screen so that uh, the insects uh, do not enter uh, inside. Then there can be these rubber strips or plastic strips that can be put in addition to what we have as air curtains. 
whatever pipings or whatever uh, pipes or cables that are laid down ensure that they are sealed properly without leaving any gaps. Uh, remember, as I said, uh, a mouse can enter through just a very small hole, which is around six to seven millimeters wide, right? And, and that's a very small opening, right? So make sure that all the openings, they are actually closed uh, properly. Secondly, all the doors or the entrances that you have that lead to especially the production area or uh, to the sensitive areas, let's say a storage area in the restaurant, uh, let them be guarded on both the sides with rodent bait station boxes, which may have uh, either, uh, you know, the glue traps that can actually trap them or some kind of, in, in fact, in food industry, inside baits are not allowed, poisonous baits are not allowed. So therefore, uh, what we actually are left with an option is the glue trap. So this is something which again acts as a barrier to prevent entry of the pests. Next one is deny food and water. Now you can see these are the real images. Now the first image is, is uh, uh, is the tray that is below a cooler, right, water cooler. And this this is usually ignored. So while we clean, uh, we don't really uh, bother to look what is there the down. Uh, on the top, everything is spick, uh, very clean and uh, spick and span, but uh, underneath or behind those equipment, it, it becomes uh, very difficult to see what all is there. A lot of food is left uncovered. Again, this is a big concern because if you go to hotel kitchens, you would see uh, especially those mixer and grinders, uh, these are left uh, overnight uh, without proper cleaning. So anything that you uh, leave open, you do not cover, uh, that that becomes an open invitation for the insects and pests to come in. There, there would be a lot of food for them to enjoy. Uh, similarly, you see these kind of cracks or the covers of, of this uh, drainage opening is, is not secured properly. And again, if there's, uh, you can see a lot of flour here. So it gets accumulated and it will invite, again, a lot of uh, insects and pests to your facility. Similarly, when we look at the exteriors of uh, our facility, there may be these kind of open drainage systems or some water logging, which will actually provide free water to all these pests. And therefore, uh, all, all these images that you see uh, are basically uh, showing how we, without uh, you know having that intention, uh, provide a lot of food and water to the pest. So the best thing to deny food and water is keep all your food items covered properly with the lids. Have every place cleaned properly so that there are no food residues. Uh, all drainages systems uh, have them cleaned regularly and have them covered properly. Now deny shelter. So let's uh, assume that uh, okay there there is some food we are not able to help much in that then do not provide them shelter. Eliminate all the conditions like you see here. Uh, you see in the storage areas, normally, ideally, it has to be around one and a half feet distance uh, between uh, your stored products and the wall so that there could be easy inspection and it should not provide hiding space to any of the pests. But inadvertently, uh, this does happen. Similarly, when we look at uh, these drainages, like these are open drainages, there are a lot of uh, mud and other construction material that lies in. Again, that provides a good condition for pests to come in. Uh, if you look at the condition of wall here or, or you know, these garbage areas, the garbage starts, uh, you know, flowing out. And, and again, uh, if, when it becomes a lot of it, and especially in monsoons, this will become a breeding site for uh, house flies and, and also many other pests. Now, let me tell you, one single garbage can actually can uh, help produce more than 2,000 new flies every week. And now imagine if that is the situation, uh, what will happen to your food safety program? And finally, along with all these measures, if we have undertaken the first three Ds seriously, we would not reach at this stage of destroy where we'll have to resort to a lot of uh, you know, uh, chemicals or, or something else. So uh, that is something which will eliminate more than 80% of your pest problems, the first three Ds. And finally, if, if required, then we have to destroy. We'll have to, uh, and also when I say destroy, it doesn't mean only uh, use of chemicals. Uh, it can be uh, basically in terms of uh, putting insectocutors. When I say insectocutors, they are insect light uh, traps or electrocutors. Uh, the image that you see on the right top is actually an electric fly killer. Uh, there is an electric, uh, there is a grid, uh, metal grid inside. These blue lights, which emit UV radiations, they actually 
attract flies or flying insects and they get electrocuted in, in the electric grid which is there. And the, one of the concerns with this is that while they actually get electrocuted, these insects actually the moment they come in uh, contact with the grid, they burst into pieces. And if you actually have installed these kind of devices uh, near your uh, food items, right? If the exposed food, chances are that insect fragments would actually fall on the food material and you would not even know. And, and therefore, uh, while we actually design our pest management program, we should also identify what kind of devices need to be there. So if, if you are using electric fly killers like this uh, that electrocutes the insects, ideally they should be at least three meters away from any uh, food contact surface or any exposed food material. And there is an alternative which is called electric fly catcher. Instead of electric grid, there is a glue trap. So what happens is as the insects get attracted towards these uh, lights, they actually come and get stuck to the glue. And so that becomes a, a better way to manage pests. And finally, uh, there would be also a resort if, if required at all. After all these measures fail, there is, there is a, a increase in the population of pests. In, in that case, we have to then look at what kind of chemical control we would like to use. And while we use chemicals, we have to one, ensure that they are safe to use. That is one. Second, how we are using, the technician must be trained very well. He must be certified and he should be able to understand food safety. What is food safety? What are GMPs? This kind of understanding must be there with your pest control operator. And then they should also know what are the sensitive areas where they should not use pesticides at all. So the entire effort has to eliminate pest population or prevent them reaching to the sensitive zones. So that is how the fourth D comes into play. Now, having done all these things, having understood uh, these four Ds, uh, what we have to also understand or learn is what are the evidence of a good pest management? When you have everything in place, what is it that would actually help you know uh, that your program is successful? So there are three evidences. Number one, there, are, there would be no pests, right? Uh, one of the one of the very uh, severe uh, audits that actually uh, is conducted is by AIB, American Institute of Baking. So a sight of uh, insect or even uh, bird droppings can actually lead to disqualification uh, of the audit itself. So it will disqualify a facility from audit. There would be no audit happening. So the first thing, uh, first evidence is that there would be no pests or no signs of pests. The second would be installation of right kind of uh, you know, pest uh, management equipment, like for example, the electric fly catchers, rodent bait station boxes at right locations. So these devices would again uh, become a sign of good pest management. And finally, a good documentation. So as, as Dr. Pasupati also insisted, there has to be proper contract signed. That is one with all the details laid down. There would be, there should be MSBS of all the chemicals or pesticides that are being used. There should be reports of pest history, pest trends, and, and other things, and also evidence of every service that is carried out to manage pests. So with these evidences, you can actually rest assured that yes, the program is going in the right direction, and there is either no threat to your food safety program or a very limited threat to your food safety program. So with this, uh, we all have to understand that a robust pest management actually helps or complements a robust food safety program. So without a robust pest management program, you will not have your food safety program uh, succeeding. So with this, uh, I would close my presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, if there Thank are any you. questions, we can take them. Thank you so much. We are opening the deck for uh, questions. Uh, Pashupati sir has left because he had a flight to catch. He was uh, he was taking the webinar uh, from the airport lounge. So he just yes. called me and he had to leave because you know there was a call going on. So yeah. So if there are any questions that we have. I think there are a number of hands raised. I don't know whether they're accidentally raised or yeah. You have something in the chat. Thank you, sir. Can we get a recording of this lecture? 
yes this entire uh, section uh, session is recorded and we will be putting it up on our youtube channel the links of the same will be shared to you uh, sir they are asking what is a snag report if you can answer that yes snag uh, by snag report it's it's basically uh, the report where uh, it it actually gives you the gaps uh, you know in in your uh, pest management program or in your facility like for example there may be a lot of cracks and crevices okay which will actually facilitate either the entry of the pests or or uh, you know they will also provide some kind of shelter to them second one is uh, there is breach of your food safety program so for example uh, there is an insect or there is uh, there is a rodent dropping uh, that comes into your product or it comes very near to where you store the products mm -hmm. so these are basically uh, the parts of the snag report a snag report actually tells you when have these breaches occurred and and details of those breaches okay um the other question that we have is uh, how can we use various chemicals on seasonal basis for pest management okay so uh, see one of the things is while we use uh, pesticides it's not actually uh, use of pesticide doesn't depend on seasonality that is number one it it would depend on what kind of pests that we are actually uh, encountering so for example when it comes to uh, insect pests you will be using uh, probably uh, pyrethrins uh, if, if possible we can actually use uh, the pyrethrins which are not synthetic right uh, although there is a prevalence of synthetic uh, uh, pyrethrins which are pretty safe to use so that is one similarly when it comes to rodents uh, you will have to use the rodenticide so the basic idea is uh, when it comes to seasonality uh, the seasons actually when we create this history or trend of pest occurrence it helps us to know in what season what kind of pests come in like for example when there is a lot of harvest happening and we are getting a lot of raw material during that period you would get a lot of uh, you know uh, agricultural pests along with your raw material if not screened properly so uh, that is where seasonality comes into play however when it is about the choice of pesticides it is basically the type of pest that we are encountering okay. yeah okay. Uh, the other question that we have is how can we control pests biologically and uh, name of some biodegradable traps do we have any biodegradable or no as uh, as of now we, yeah as of now we don't have biodegradable uh, traps but yes there is a lot of research that is going on so that is one for example even the glue that has been uh, used so far many countries have uh, banned use of uh, these uh, glue traps especially for rodents because uh, that is considered to be too inhumane and even in india that uh, this notification has come although this is one of the uh, you know safest ways in terms of uh, food safety uh, so uh, biodegradable uh, i don't think as of now it is there but yes for biocontrol uh, not for all the pests urban pests that we are talking about whether it is rodents or roaches uh, there is no biological agent as of now but yes for mosquitoes uh, there are uh, certain uh, you know biological agents which are available in the market that can be used okay uh there are many messages people are sharing their email ids uh, there some very generic questions very very generic okay one question that i would uh, just pick up someone uh, mentioned that yeah. if we have ipm plan uh, is it yeah. necessary to have yeah. uh, pest uh, yeah. control now see ipm plan uh, when we talk about plan any plan a uh, plan is something that lays down what we intend to do right so it is just the plan a uh, document so that is ipm plan but when it comes to pest control or use of pesticides or use of devices for pest control it has to be executed right so uh, the planning and execution both have to go hand in hand so it's it's not that we have plan uh, we can't really uh, we don't need uh, pest control or pest control operators it has to go uh, together okay i think we have one uh, person who is i think she, that person is not from india so i am taking that question uh, dr shukla as of the moment our main problem is that in our test kitchen laboratory we have uh, german cockroaches we are scheduling misting okay. but still the cockroaches are staying what are we going to do to get rid of these pests okay 
so uh, see misting is is uh, certainly it's it's a, a good way to you know um, try to manage the pests but uh, as i said uh, first thing is to identify where exactly uh, they are breeding like uh, these german cockroaches can actually uh, get into cracks and crevices uh, which are around uh, less than 1 mm right so that is uh, something which is there so first thing is apart from using these mists or sprays uh one thing that can be done is seal all the cracks and crevices that are uh, within your uh, test kitchen okay that is one second one is uh try using uh, these baits you know there are uh, baits that come in uh, these are in form of gel so buyer actually manufactures these gel baits uh, you can use which are specific for uh, the cockroaches and i'm sure while you carry out the sealing and uh, use these baits uh, i'm i'm sure uh, within a month or two you should be able to uh, get uh, rid of them or at least have the population reduced to a great level but then this entire exercise will have to continue uh, till you see a zero population there uh, hope this yes. gets answered so the last question you know, that we are going to take for today's session is uh, any option for substitute of chemicals in organic industry okay so uh, Uh, honestly speaking in in our country uh, as of now we don't have uh, many options so the best way is uh, following first three d's so that is denying shelter uh, first is denying entry then denying shelter uh, and and food and water so if we try to do this this would be one secondly instead of using uh, pesticides we can use various devices like for example these electric uh, fly catchers uh, where they are actually uh, these uv uh, lights which are there and they are actually supported by a glue trap so you can actually also use insect light traps in different ways like for example if it is for uh, flies if that is your concern they have to be actually put up either on the floor or up to a height of 5 feet but if you are concerned about let's say the night flying insect which high fly uh, which fly higher in that case you'll have to hang them maybe around 10 or 15 feet high so that the flying insects moths they get actually trapped so uh, you will have to resort largely to the traps inside and also uh, using various devices uh, externally and and you'll have to resort to lot of monitoring so for this you will need uh, expert pest management partners to help you in taking this forward thanks so much dr shukla uh, and for all the other participants i think most of you are aware of how uh, you know we roll out you all will be getting the certificate of participation for attending today's session so uh, kindly share your email ids if you have not shared it till now so once we have your email ids we will be sharing a feedback link with you and also a link of this webinar of our youtube channel all right so once you fill in the uh, link and give us your feedback we will be providing you the yeah. certificate of participation for this webinar so this is going to take approximately 3 uh, to 4 days 3 to 4 working days for us to Uh, get all the feedback and send out the email so you can expect your uh, certificate of participation next week so uh, to wind it all up uh, thanks again uh, dr shukla and uh, i hope all the people here uh, you know who are attending they've had you know some information some insights about how to you know go about you know doing pest control in their food industries so again on behalf of fixi and my entire team i thank you all and i hope you have a good day and a good weekend thanks so much thank you thank you dr ronan sir and thank, thank you all the audience